Hi, I'm Heather and I'm a paramedic with Toronto Paramedic Services and I'm going to talk to you about my job today. It's pretty cool and I like it. Today we're going to learn about when to call a paramedic, how to call a paramedic, what happens when we arrive and the sort of equipment that we have to help you feel better. I'm so glad that I went to school to become a paramedic. Every day I get to help people out with all of their medical emergencies. Sometimes I help people who have fallen. Have you fallen? Me too, and that's okay. Sometimes you just brush yourself off and grab a band-aid. Other times it's more serious and you might need us to come and help you out. We'll fix you up and take you to the hospital. This is my partner, Francesca. Hello. She's a paramedic too. <laughs> Hi, do you know what number to call if you need the paramedics to come and help you? I can't hear you. Great, 911, that's the number you call if you have an emergency. It's not what you call if you just need a band-aid or it's something minor that maybe your parents can help you with. But if you have an emergency and you need to go to the hospital, call 911. When you call, a really nice person called an emergency medical dispatcher is going to answer the phone and ask you for your address. It's really important that you know your address. So now would be a really good time to practice learning your address. When you call 911, we show up with an ambulance. We bring everything that we need to help you feel better. We have lots of equipment that we can use to check you out, make you feel better, and then take you, transport you to the hospital safely. So sometimes you just need a band-aid if you have a little cut, but what if you fall off your bike and you hurt your hand? It might be broken, it might be sprained, you need to go to the hospital. We bring everything to treat you, make you feel better, and take you to the hospital. Okay, let's go check on our patient. Hi, Patch. This is Patch. He's our paramedic. It looks like he's fallen off of his bicycle today. We should probably help him out. Oh, Patch, what happened to you? You hurt your arm? Let's check it out. No bleeding, I see. Okay, well, we better take you to the hospital in case it's sprained or broken. Did you hurt anything else today, Patch? No, all right. Here, let me splint your arm before we go. Hold that. All right, so this is a splint. I'm gonna use it to just support your hand and your arm so it doesn't hurt while we're traveling to the hospital. Heather's gonna wrap it up for me. And that'll help you feel better. We'll have to get an x-ray once we go to the hospital. They might wanna put a cast on your arm. This will help get you there. How's that? Feeling okay. a little bit better? All right. We'll lower our stretcher down and then we're gonna help you to sit on it. We have lots of seat belts on the stretcher because just like when you're in your car, you need to wear your seat belt because we'll be in a moving vehicle. All right, one, two, three, up. Watch those. Just fit nicely under the cardiac monitor. Ooh. All right. All right, let's get you buckled in. Are you comfortable, Patch? <sighs> okay, great. So I'm gonna be riding in the back of the ambulance with you, Patch, and there's no need to be scared. We'll keep the lights on. Heather's gonna drive nice and slowly so that we don't hit too many bumps. Not too many. So now that we've patched up your arm, we're gonna check your vital signs to make sure that all of you is healthy right now. And what I mean by that, I'm gonna take my stethoscope, I'm going to listen to your breathing, I'm gonna check your heart rate, and I'm gonna take your blood pressure, which is just gonna be a squeeze on your arm. Nothing's gonna hurt. So great, this arm please, Patch. Dub dub, dub dub, dub dub, dub dub. Fantastic, your heart sounds really good. You sound really healthy. We'll take a blood pressure, and I need a finger, or I guess in your case, a paw. <laughs> We're gonna put this thing, it's called a pulse oximeter, on your finger. That's gonna take a look at your heart rate. It's also gonna tell me how much oxygen is in your blood, so that I know that the air that you're breathing in your lungs is getting all throughout your body and that you're nice and healthy. We'll also take your temperature to make sure that you don't have a fever. Are you feeling, 
starting to feel better, Pat? There we go. No fever? And everything else looks really good. All of your vital signs are normal. But your arm is still hurt, so we'll definitely take you to the hospital. You probably need an x-ray, you might need a cast. We can do a lot of things on our ambulance, but we can't put a cast on your arm and we can't do stitches. So it's important that we go to the hospital and see the doctor. All right. <sighs> Don't be scared, Patch. I'm gonna be in the back of the ambulance with you. It's not dark in there and we might even be able to play your favorite tunes on the way to the hospital. Up we go. And Heather's gonna drive slowly so it won't be too bumpy. I'll be in the back of the ambulance with you. We'll have the lights on and we might even be able to play your favorite tunes on the way. I hope you're starting to feel better. Heather's gonna drive us to the hospital. Okay, let's just make sure that, yeah, got good circulation, good pulse. So now you've learned a little bit about paramedics and some of the stuff that we do. You've learned that you call 911 in order for us to come. You've learned that you only call us in very serious emergencies. And you've learned that we have a whole bunch of equipment that we use to take a look at your heart, your lungs, and even to fix up your broken bones. And now you also know we're pretty nice people, so no need to be scared. So thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye. Um, how about an ice pack? Sorry, excuse my niche. I'll just squeeze hard and give a shake. And um, let's just put an ice pack on your wrist where it hurts. I'll just tuck that in there so it stays 